you know, I've watched you sometimes how people disagree with you, but mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa, you know Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it could watch Johnny's bite. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbunallah wa neem al wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Friday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Juma Mubarak to all our Muslim brothers and sisters. And when you go down to pray, pray for Ghana. Pray for yourself. And pray that God himself will redeem his nation. I understand that this morning there's heavy rain in Tamale. And so you want to be very, very careful while we cry with our brothers and sisters further up north with the spillage of the Bagri Dam. And we haven't taken any serious concerns as a people to make sure that they are safe and secure from all alarm, even to the point where we suggest that we don't even have enough relief items for them. You would have to pray that they don't get into more trouble. Because the last time I remember, People along the Volta Lake and the sea defense wall that was being constructed for them, we played politics with it up until now. We have changed two ministers for works and housing, and we still do not have a way forward <clears throat> for the construction of the sea defense wall. So pray for them as well. And I pray that they find the shelter. Usually, the announcement is made that, oh, they should move to higher grounds and safer grounds. See, which safer grounds? But I pray that they find people who will be willing and able to accommodate them because we do not have shelters for that reason as a country, in this country. Let me say thank you to Sonar Fashions in Tamale and um, just say that you can always call him on 0246 590162. That's 0246-590-162. will fix you something special. There's something happening at McCoy College. In Nadoli, a Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Alban Sumana Kinsford Bagwin, is constructing an astroturf. In fact, he has done that. I'm, I understand, and he will be doing the commissioning. He, uh, Wembley Sports did that. The McCoy College of Education Sports Complex, they have the astroturf right there, and all the stars that you know in football, in football will be there. Stephen Apia, name them. Everybody will be there. That's uh, a legacy that Speaker Bagwin will be commissioning uh, very, very soon. And um, this is uh, to his credit. And to that of Robert Tetekoman, who always say that Manya Mafia itamo in Lefemo. To wait, I know I can do it. It's not the same as I know how to do it. So, Speaker Bagwin, congratulations to you. I understand there's another one that he wants to commission. Somebody will say better late than never, but it is happening. So, congrats to you, Mr. Speaker. Let's begin. And before we go there, have you noticed that the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation? Doesn't, hasn't done any more stories on the three million, huh? A three million dollars, 3.6 million dollars. That has stirred a lot of controversy. Have you noticed that GBC, they have not done any story after Prof. Amin Alassan spoke. My intel there tells me that it is order from above for them to shut up and not talk about the thing. They have been told to shut up Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. So if you monitored GBC after Professor Means Alassane's, the Director General's last interview on the news, GBC has not done a single story. They should prove me wrong. They have been told to shut up. I say in this country, when you are on a certain path and speaking the truth to power and asking questions, the system will be will be marshaled against you. For some of us, we know that the risk that we're taking, and we will not waver. The system will be marshaled against you. 
told them to shut up. <laughs> and then you, you wake up and you read that $111 million is what we have been slapped to pay or has been slapped on us to pay as judgment debt. Our celebrity attorney general and all his team, we have to pay that. And yesterday, I, I understand what was called. He said, oh, it's not him. It's the finance ministry that has to pay, blah, blah, blah. The bottom line is that 100 million U.S. dollars. You can do the conversion. 111 million U.S. dollars times 16 CDs. Don't add the coins. Tell me how much money that is. And tell me what that money could have done for us as a people. And tell me today, you, you are a Gen Z. Right? You are busy and happy about this, everything that's happening. Do the conversion. If you get that can kwacha for your pocket, you know go happy you. If you get even 2% or 0.007% in your pocket, you know go happy you. Man, but you know, you know get them too. You go go back for food. You go go hustle for them. But still, you go come defend. Because you have been told to come and defend. Ah well? Yesterday, I went to <clears throat> some place around Tesano. And when I was going, I saw a group of young people at the Kwab in Kruma Circle. Remember that during COVID time, I told you about the fact that <clears throat> I saw these young people. I mean, usually you see children along the, the, the major traffic lights or around the major traffic lights begging for money. And their mothers usually and their fathers will hide under a certain shit and push the children. If they go and they don't get money, they come, they abuse them. Yesterday I was there. These are able-bodied young people. Part of the 1.9 million young people who are unemployed. Kwame Nkrumah Circle. Yesterday, while they were there in full glare of everybody and the police, they were fighting. There were policemen there. But they had come, they had been detailed to come and work on the traffic situation there because there's some construction going on around the uh, Ghanaian Times runabout, the family Ghanaian Times runabout, and there's some beautiful work going on. They are fixing it. Kudos to whoever is doing it, urban roads, the government, highways. Kudos to them. But I saw this yesterday, and I was... That those are the policemen. They were minding their business, doing their work. And they were not so far away from the, the boys who were fighting and doing all their things. These are able-bodied young people. Sleeping in the median. I'm sure that they started, they came out on the street. See, see the altercation. They're fighting. I'm sure that they, 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 started, they started this whole street journey a long time ago. A very long time ago. This street journey. And they have grown on the street. In the full glare of the police and the public, they fight. They confront each other. They don't care. Today, they may be fighting themselves. Oh. Tomorrow, they will come and fight in your house. Because you have decided to keep shut, your mouth shut about the situation that is ongoing. Social protection is zero in this country. Yesterday, I was told about a situation at Newtown where somebody, a certain harassing guy who has abused his four-year-old daughter because she, she messed up on herself. She poo-pooed on herself. Four-year-old daughter. You should see the pictures. Gory. And they say, oh, he's a langard, so everybody is afraid of him. But this is the situation. One day they will leave the streets and they'll come to you because you never cared about them. You see the way they are growing? There's no love on the streets. There's no empathy. There's no sympathy. This is a national security concern. And if you read the 2014 national security document itself, it talks about the youth bulge. It talks about the youth bulge. Right? It talks about all those things. We have not paid attention to them. We think that it is a joke. The day it will blow up in our faces, we will know that, yes, something has blown up in our faces. It will be too hard for us to solve. The day it will blow up in our faces. And that day is coming. Because we are doing nothing about fixing the situation. That day is coming. 
Chief, take me to Tamale. There are some low cost houses. Listen to the nomenclature low cost houses. I've showed you the video of the boys at Nkrumah Circle, and they are there. If you go there, you find them. You saw their mattresses in the middle of the road. They're sleeping there. Now listen to the nomenclature. Low-cost houses. Tamale Metropolitan Assembly. Tamale South Sub-Metro District Council. A letter dated the 8th, the 6th of August 2024. And it says, eviction notice. Nyohini Low-Cost House number ms5 let's read it together reference the government of ghana's policy to sell all low-cost houses to the regional coordinating councils metropolitan municipal and district assemblies government organizations and institutions as well as private individuals consequently the nyohini low cost house number ms5 you will currently occupy has been sold Consequently, eh, the house, low-cost house at Nyohini MS5 has been sold. People live in it, but they have sold it. As a city planning authority, the buyer of the Nyohini low-cost house number five lodged a conformal complaint to, at the assembly seeking for its intervention to request you to vacate the house to make way for this, his use. So there's no ambiguity that it was sold to a man. Who is the man behind this? And why was it sold to him? When was it sold to him? Who sold it to him? The third paragraph says, You are by this letter humbly requested to make arrangement to vacate Nyohini Low Cost House MS, uh, MS5 that you currently occupy on or before the 6th of September 2024. And my birthday is on the 5th of September. One day after my birthday, they are asking the family that live in that facility to vacate Vamus. The question is, and go where? It's signed by, we hope you will not, you will comply to avoid any embarrassment. Short notice, leave the house, and we hope you comply to avoid any embarrassment. Elijah Combien Fant is the head of administration for the Metropolitan Chief Executive. And it is to the occupant, Nyohini Low Cost House, MS Number 5, Nyohini, Building Inspector uh, T -T Tama. Why did they have to take the assembly to write this letter? Does the property belong to the assembly? Is the assembly now the rent control authority? Is the assembly now the state housing authority? What is the interest of the assembly in this facility? Oh, I'm asking questions. Does the facility belong to the assembly? It doesn't belong to them. Okay. So why are they interested in this matter? Who is pushing them to make these, this request? And you see, the assembly is not even saying that in the interim, this is our shelter. If you have no place to go and live, go and perch there for some time while you look for a permanent accommodation. They just said that we hope you comply to avoid any embarrassment. In this hard time, in this economy, how things are this tough. This morning is raining heavily in Tamale, I've told you. And you go and say somebody has bought this property. This state property, somebody has bought it. And as soon as somebody has bought it, so far as somebody has bought it, we are coming in. The person has lodged a complaint with us. And as city authority, we are coming in to say that, please move. And we hope you comply on or before the 6th of September 2024 to avoid any embarrassment. Where are they going to? Even people who go and come every day, rent is a big issue. Don't talk to me about rent assistance. No, don't talk to me about rent assistance scheme. Don't talk to me about it. Even the government doesn't talk about it. Don't, so don't talk to me about it. Where do you want them to go? The family. I'm asking the chief executive, the municipal chief executive. I'm asking you, sir, good morning. Where do you want that family to go? The family that lives at Nyohini Low Cost House MS number no. 5. That you have given an ultimatum by the 6th of September. I said, that's a day after my birthday. Where do you want them to go? 
are we have we become so heartless that there's no fellow feeling that we don't care we don't care what happens all we are interested in we have sold it to one big man or the other he's coming to erect a beautiful edifice and that's all we care about the people down there whose two cd and one cd contributes to the igf of the assembly do we care about them do we worry about them are we really concerned about them or we are just interested in this place has been bought so move i told you a, a matter in, a, around the airport here where a soldier was giving a senior serving military officer was giving just 24 hour notice to vacate from a, a, a military facility military uh, you know property we were told that oh that facility is going to be used to build accommodation to to accommodate a lot more senior military people they turned around when they came back the place had been given to a private estate developer to be doing something something heights i showed you that that photo here who is behind it i will tell you in the coming days now guta has a concern but before we go to guta there is the former boss of the TUC, Yaoba, a very strong and formidable force. Hmm? A very strong and formidable force. He has left. We are planning to bring the uh, VAT on electricity again, something that Labour kicked against government went to sleep. We are bringing it back again. Play the video for me, please. This country called Ghana and all the resources we have. Now government doesn't even see anywhere to tax. They are taxing our electricity also. Tomorrow they will tax our water. And we are not going to sit down for that to continue. That's why I'm saying we are going to have baptism of fire. We need to fight it until this thing is cancelled. And that is the immediate thing. How can you add this to the problems that we have in this country? The lifeline they are talking about is just 30 kWh. 30. It used to be 50. They brought it down to 30. And if you consume, if you have two light bulbs in your house, two, and you have television and if you leave the television on for more than five hours you will pay this tax if you have fridge you are out you are going to pay the tax on the fridge why should this happen in this country tomorrow if we don't resist this tomorrow they will come and tax water they will say there's a lifeline this lifeline that they are talking about is two bulbs uh, part of television, maybe half television, <laughs> and and uh, if you switch on your your fridge, you will pay this VAT. This law was passed in 2013. Why is it that all these government have not implemented it? Why is it that we are allowing IMF to dictate to us to implement this law now? So, comrades, you have been elected at a time that there is a big fight on our hands. And we are going to fight it until we win. When a tax is slapped on your electricity, what it means is that electricity prices will go up. One of the bragging rights last Saturday when Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, the media past energy minister, spoke was that electricity prices have been brought down. Dr. Baumia says the same thing. We know what the truth is. And this is going to happen. Because we have gone to the IMF that we said we will not go to the IMF. And some of us were called names. In fact, all Ghanaians, Sambalat and Tobias, professional Jeremias, were called names. The president and his ministers, they called us names. We haven't called them names. And they haven't also apologized to us for calling us names, for, for us saying that the way you are going, you are going on the rough road and you will take us into the ditch. They say, you are Sambalat, you are Tobias, you are Jeremias and Nehemiah. They, they mentioned those things to us. And that we're in a Joshua and Caleb economy. Today we see a, a real size in the scheme of things and nobody has come to us with a proper apology. The, the finance minister tried an apology, but 
The people say it was an insincere apology. You apologize and then you blame others for what is happening. And when we say, we say well, where we find ourselves, where we find ourselves, where we find ourselves, who took us there? Who, because we have a leader. Who took us there? When Moses was leading the Israelites, when they got to a point, the people blamed him because he is their leader. Who is our leader? Is our leader standing up? The man who... We didn't vote for uh, Amin Adamu. We didn't vote for Keno Foriata. We didn't vote for Kojo Oponkruma. We didn't vote for Dr. Baumia. We voted for Nanado Dankwe Kufado. Where we are now. Has our president at any point had a certain sense of reflection to say, what I told the people, I have not been able to do. What I promised the people, I have not been able to achieve. The things I told them I would not do, I have actually gone overboard and perfected it. Is it family and friends? Is it corruption? Is it uh, punishing people? Is it using their NAS principle? Name them. Never, not even once, has a president come to apologize to us. Rather, he would go to public functions and ask chiefs to get up and greet him. Rather, when chiefs say that, oh, this school in my community, you came to a uh, cat sword, we started it, it's there, come and complete it, so they say, go and fix it yourself. You can't give me an ultimatum. When the people who queued, who he begged for five times to vote for him before they did, when the people say, ah, Mr. President, what are you saying? If you decide you can vote for me or not vote for me or vote for my party on it, that's not my concern. He has not for once apologized to the people. Not for once, not for a, a second, apologize to the people. And he has handlers. But everybody is afraid of the president to tell him that, hey, even the military is afraid of the president to tell him that, ah, Mr. President, we know by our rules, your ADC is supposed to be a lieutenant colonel or a colonel. Your ADC is supposed to be a lieutenant colonel. Yet the president, as, as a general and commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, has another general doing follow back for him. Do you know what it means to reach the rank of a general, attain the rank of a general, a brigadier general? This is the second brigadier general following the president around. Follow, follow boy. And the military is watching. They know it is wrong, but they are watching. The military knows that the, the, sec, the first lady is supposed to have a police guard, but they have given the first lady a military guard, and that, that person, that lady also is a major, a full major. And when you attain the rank of a major, you are a senior officer in the army follow back we know what the truth is we know what the right thing is but everybody is quiet because i want to stay on that position i want to be there i want to be in the good books of otutu brofo nanaya and kamasem i want to be in his good books and you ask yourself for how long because after 7 december 7 january nanado will not be president anymore power will shift whether it goes to Dr. Baumia, Alan Chamatin, John Mahama, whoever it goes to, power will shift. Where does your allegiance lie? I say, where does your allegiance, where does it lie? You are lacing your boot this morning to go to work. Ask yourself, where does your allegiance lie? Where does it lie? Put a, put a Guta letter on. That's a final thing. I will read it and go away. Guta is asking questions. This is dated the 21st of August, 2024. Press statement. Traders would not accept any import licensing or permit regime. The business community wishes to appeal to the President of the Republic not to assent to the Ghana Shippers Authority Act 2024 until some critical issues raised on the act by stakeholders are resolved. They are as follows. One. The issue of registration of shippers and shipping service providers were not discussed with us to make our, our input as stakeholders in the shipping industry. So a matter that is not discussed, was not discussed, is now finding presence in, 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 in what do you call it, uh, implementation. Two, submission of notice of shipment was not also discussed with stakeholders for their input. Issue number two. Three. The final draft was issued to stakeholders only after Parliament had approved the bill. Four, issues raised on the suspension of registration, renewal of certificate or registration, cancellation of registration, and outright rejection, which are only 
related to permit licenses to operate as importers have not been resolved with the stakeholders. Four issues not resolved. Five, advancement, the advance, advanced shipment information system that has been resisted and withdrawn by the government in the past is now being reintroduced in the act backdoor approach our position i told you the system will always be used to to drag you down our position on that has not changed moreover this information sought by the gsa is of no relevance to their operation six for these reasons the shippers authority has agreed to our concerns and promised that as the act has already been passed by parliament they would use legislative instruments to correct any defects or anomaly in the operationalization of the act however our consultation suggests that allies cannot override an act mo dr joseph will be you know book hence i call on the president of the republic not to assent to the act until all issues raised are resolved signed dr joseph will president now who told them that you can use an ally to override an act the ally draws its powers from the act <laughs> so how do you use an ally to over i mean what kind of what kind of sometimes there's some of these these hogwash people should not be telling others about it maybe this will add to the pile of uh what do you call it bills that are before the president that is uh, acts that are before the president that is failing to assent his signature you remember the lgbtqia plus of gprt of tuc act he has not signed it. Remember the witchcraft bill? He has not signed it. The president has about four of them on his table now. He has limited time until 7 January 2025. He is not signing them. Affirmative action. There was a lot of talk about, and that's a low hanging fruit, for example, for the president. To redeem his image because when he went on the global stage, he embarrassed himself about a female, activated women and all of empowered women, blah, blah, blah. You remember all those talks? And how the women activists out there came at our president. We felt so embarrassed. Now the affirmative action bill has been passed. The women of the country who are more than 50% 50, 50 of, the, of the population are watching the president. What would it take for the president to sign that? Meanwhile, E. Levy, we saw the, the speed, right? E. Levy, we saw the speed. I can give you a plethora of laws that we saw the speed. They, they do it today, we, psh, we sign. They do it, psh, we sign it because there's money in there. Affirmative action, there's no money there. Witchcraft act, there's no money there. LGBTQI, there's no money there. So we won't sign. And then now this latest one. How long can we press down traders of this country and press them down a hole when most of them are shutting down? People are losing their jobs and their livelihoods. We are not awake to reality. And we are all assuming that everything is okay. And when you talk, they say, shut up. Okay? I will shut up. Please call me. Now it's your time to speak. 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. Good morning. Hello. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yeah, this is 